Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. Today's video is a whole bunch more fall Dollar Tree DIYs, and I mean a whole bunch. Alrighty, to make this tiered tray, I am using almost nothing. To say I am using a gift box from Dollar Tree, a couple of the Dollar Tree glass candle holders, which yes, I totally have hoarded, and I am using some of those little candle cups that I had in my stash. Now we got to paint it and I'm having a tough time deciding which one. I have blue, I have the hammered metal that I've used before, and black. These are my pumpkins from Dollar Tree, and this is kind of what's inspired the entire color scheme for this. But by the same token, I want it to be neutral enough that I can use it anywhere in the house, any time of year. So my choices were coastal blue, hammered metal, or a really nice black spray paint that I've used several times before. You guys head down to the comments and tell me which one you think I should use. And then I'm gonna show you which one I did use. All right, probably not a big surprise. I went with the hammered metal. It's nice and neutral. And I didn't use the black, which would have been also neutral because I have another tear tray coming up that I'm going to do in black for a friend of mine. Now, I've been challenged to use Jenga blocks, and I'll tell you more about that after. So first up, we have to go through, and using my antiquing wax and a baby wipe, I am pretty much going to stain about a gazillion of these, or that's what it felt like anyway. So I'm just showing you here how I did it. I should have worn gloves. This stuff was everywhere. It did wash off, but seriously gloves wouldn't have been a bad idea here so i headed out to my living room and put something on netflix and yep i got them all done now using my gorilla wood glue as well as my glue gun i'm going to attach these all around the tray and essentially that is what you're going to see when you're looking at the tray I was really fortunate and these fit pretty well around the tray. I did have to trim just a couple and you'll see me later on using my little miter box and saw to do that, but they went on really well and oh my goodness, look at that hammered silver with that beautiful antique wax on the Jenga blocks. I think this tray looks like a million bucks and definitely going to be using this season after season after season. Later in the video, we are going to make a whole bunch of decor to fill this tiered tray. So today I am going to be using these beautiful blue and white bandanas from Dollar Tree as well as a whole bunch of the tumbling tower blocks. My color scheme was inspired by these two pumpkins I picked up at Dollar Tree. Oh my goodness, I've never found such pretty ones there. So let's get going and do a whole bunch of DIYs. Today's video is part of the Fab Five collab hosted by the Crafting Cousins. The best part about today, other than a whole bunch of inspiration, is the fact that you have a chance to win. First things first, I want you guys, when you're done watching this playlist, to go and check out my friends, the Crafting Cousins. They are amazing and absolutely hilarious. Hey y'all, let's craft. See what I mean? I'm gonna tell you more about that giveaway after we do our first DIY. So I did wash my bandanas because I wanted to get that stiffness out of them and we are gonna use those freshly washed bandanas to make a gorgeous wreath, of course, for my mom, because it's blue and white. So I am going to cut these up because what I wanna do is capture just this one part of the blue and white bandana. So we're going to really quickly go through and trim off a whole bunch of these. I want to say I used ooh, three or four bandanas and then we're going to attach them end to end with just a tiny bit of hot glue. And this fabric's really thin so you need very little. Now I'm going to create a tube and yes, you could absolutely sew this and part of me wishes I had, but you know what? The glue was there and it was hot and it was ready and I decided just to go for it. So I am gonna create that tube so I have the perfect part of the pattern. 
And I'm using a piece of parchment paper in there so that the glue doesn't go through and stick to the other side. It was a bit of a nuisance, but I'm really glad I did it because like I said, that fabric is thin. Now that I have my tube, I have to cut my wreath open so that I can slice it on. So I'm just using my side cutters real quick and cutting through the Dollar Tree wire frame. Now, so that fabric doesn't catch when I'm sliding it on, I'm just using a little bit of my painter's tape to cover the end and make this go on super easy. And just like that, we have a wreath covered in bandana. And oh my goodness, I'm loving it. And we haven't even finished it yet. So now we have to put this back together and I put another piece, different piece of green painter's tape on here, put a few dots of hot glue right on the end of the metal wreath form. And then I'm putting it back together and using the tape to hold it in place while that glue sets up. What I also did was add a little bit of glue and stick down the end of the wreath so I could pull the other end over top of it, a couple of dabs of glue there, and this part of the wreath making is done. I gathered a whole bunch of florals that I had around. Some of these are new from Dollar Tree. Some of them are really old from Dollar Tree and I'm so, so trying to use up some of my stash. And I just created a cute little bundle here that I'm gonna zip tie together. Why am I zip tying it instead of gluing it? Well. I don't always keep this stuff and my mom doesn't have a ton of storage space. So I figured if I zip tie the flowers together and we remake this and I zip tie it onto the wreath, I could change it out seasonally. I could do, who knows, all kinds of stuff. The sky's the limit. I'm even using an old uh, bow from an old DIY I did for my mom. So it kind of illustrates the point, doesn't it? Now I had a few of these cotton stems and because I had used those zip ties, I'm able just to tuck them in just for a little added something something. And this baby's done and I really hope you guys enjoy it. But here's the thing, we had to challenge each other in this collaboration. So I challenged Teresa over at Our Green Acres to use bandanas in her DIYs. So I thought it would be fun to try a bandana DIY myself. All right, you guys, I'm gonna give you all the details you need to know about this collaboration and how you can win. But make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I've got another giveaway I wanna talk about then. All right, for today's video, what we need you to do is watch all of the videos, make sure you comment on each one of them, and there's only five, so that's not gonna take you that long. Then, the girls, my friends over at The Crafting Cousins, well, they're gonna draw two winners for two $50 Amazon gift cards. Hello, we could all use an Amazon gift card, right? Am I right? Okay, you guys, we are gonna make a whole bunch of really cute block DIYs using tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. And why you ask? Well, that's because the Hearts DIY challenged me to do my DIYs with Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks. For this one, we are gonna create a really cute sign for our tiered tray. I'm gonna be using the Aileen's Tacky Glue from Dollar Tree. I love this stuff for sticking wood together. Now I've got a couple of steps here. First up, we're gonna create the base using a few tumbling tower blocks. And I like to use my Dollar Tree square here because it really makes everything stick together nice and straight. For the main part of the sign, I'm going to be gluing together a whole bunch of these tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to say that like a million times. Let's just call them blocks. We're going to put together a whole bunch of blocks and we're going to repeat that twice before we glue those rows together. And then we're going to attach these ones I've already pre-stained. They were left over from the tiered tray and create a frame around it. Then we're going to have some fun with this.
Now, once that's all dry, I'm gonna take a little bit of this watered down paint and I am just going to give these raw blocks a little bit of a whitewash. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on those ones that were stained, but just a little bit. And we're gonna use a baby wipe just to move it around and get exactly the color I'm looking for. You guys, when I got the tumbling tower blocks as my challenge item for this collaboration, my answer was literally like, oh yes, I love using these for DIYs. I've done a video before with a whole bunch of tiered tray smalls with these. So I'm gonna make sure to link that up above and I'll put it down in the description box as well. Now those ones I did very, very quickly and they were a little bit hard in terms of being a tutorial, but if you slow it down, you should be able to see it. And some of those I'm going to try to remake in the future. In the meantime, I really hope you enjoy these ones and you make some of these for your tiered trays. Now the best thing about this little sign is you could use it for anything. I'm going to put a pumpkin on mine and in hindsight, I actually could have made this a double-sided sign because the blank, the back was totally blank. Now I took a little bit of white paint and dry brushed it onto one of these Dollar Tree pumpkins just to tone down that really yellowish tone just a tiny bit. And if you can see what I'm doing, I'm putting it on the larger part of the pumpkin and leaving the ribs that darker color. Just gives it a little more dimension. We're going to pop that right on here. We're going to add a really cute little twine bow just by wrapping some twine around my fingers and gluing it on top. And we're going to call this one done. I'll be sure to give you a close up of these when they're all finished and we're putting them on the tiered tray at the end of the video. Oh my goodness, this one is so simple. We're gonna use 11 of the tumbling tower blocks. We're gonna glue five together in one row and five together in the other row and then stick them together. The very last one is to make a, well, if I tell you, you'll know what it is. So why don't you just watch and see what I make this into. Now, I am not a big fan of these brown blocks that we're getting in the packages these days, but I figure if I'm gonna paint it, it might be okay. And I figure if I'm gonna wash it and use my diaper wipe method to do it, I'm probably gonna get kind of a neat, really fall-inspired color. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. After I had wiped it on, I started stippling it. And is anybody else having a rag rolling flashback right now? Now I just picked up a whole bunch of these burlap flowers at Dollar Tree and I just love them, although I do find them to be kind of a strange shape. So we're gonna mush these down a little bit. So rather than being quite so long, they're a little bit flatter. And I'm gonna do that a couple of ways. I have cut off the wire and kind of squeezed it up and then I'm gonna fold down some of those burlap folds until I get what to me looks a little bit more like a burlap rose. Then we're gonna glue those on here and have you figured it out yet? I am dying to know. I feel like you guys all know that I'm on a bit of a fall theme here. You can tell it's a pumpkin, right? I thought so. Now, I only managed to get a few of these burlap flowers and I really only wanted the natural ones. There was a red, which looked a little odd to me, but maybe somebody else has figured out a better way to use them. I kind of love them. I'm on the hunt for a few more and I'm just gonna keep stocking my Dollar Trees until I find a few more packages of these because 
oh my goodness, they just scream fall. Now I wanted to add a little bit more to this, so I decided to cut out a couple of leaves. And if you've been watching my fall videos, you know I love taking discarded Dollar Tree greenery leaves and cutting them down to make the leaf that I need. So all I do is take one of those leaves and cut it in sort of that classic leaf shape. And then I'm gonna use those to embellish my pumpkin a little bit. I also used another one of those pieces of floral wire, turned it into a little curly cue, and I'm sticking that on to wrap up my pumpkin. Just love this one. I figured since we had a whole bunch of bandanas left over that we could make ourselves a bandana pumpkin. And I was actually inspired to make this from watching Teresa over at Our Green Acres make some beautiful pumpkins the other day. Now, I've been saving my Dollar Tree shopping bags because they are like tissue, they are so thin. And it finally dawned on me that rather than throwing them all away, they would make great stuffing for little tiny projects like this. So all I did was take the center of the bandana, gather it together with some of those Dollar Tree bags inside. I'm tying it off with some twine, trimming the top, and then I'm going to add a couple of embellishments. Well, okay, by couple of embellishments, I meant one tiny piece of leftover greenery, but doesn't it look cute? Just like all the others, this one is so simple. So I put together four of the tumbling tower blocks. Now you noticed it's the brown one, so you know there's gonna be paint involved. Then I did two sets of three tumbling tower blocks. Then I did two sets of two tumbling tower blocks and then one. And then I'm gonna assemble them all together. And there is no way, you guys haven't figured out what I'm making yet. You have, right? Since we're dealing with a fall theme here, I decided to build myself a pumpkin out of these blocks. Now, not an original idea. I definitely saw this one on Pinterest at some point. I can't remember if they actually used these little blocks or they used scraps of wood, but either way, I thought it was super cute. What I love about this one is it would work either horizontally or vertically. We're gonna use ours vertically this time. I'm just gonna dry brush some white paint onto that so I can just see a tiny bit of that brown coming through. And then I did embellish the top, but I don't know, totally lost the footage. So I'll show you what that looks like at the end when we put it together on the tiered tray. For this one, I probably could have used the darker blocks because I am gonna cover it all up. But yeah, we'll just go with that escaped me for this one. Now I'm gonna put these together and I'm using the Aileen's glue with just a tiny drop of the hot glue because I really need to get to work on finishing this one. So I didn't want to allow too much drying time. So I'm building myself two little stacks of the tumbling tower blocks and then I'm going to attach those stacks together one on top of the other as opposed to side by side. Then once that's ready and we're going to be able to keep going right away because of the hot glue, I'm going to Mod Podge a piece of the bandana fabric onto this. I'm kind of loving the bandana, so I hope you guys are gonna hit your Dollar Trees and grab some. I actually have the reverse of this, the white with the blue on it, and I feel like mom is getting some DIYs with those as well. Now I'm not gonna teach you how to Mod Podge here. I'm pretty sure you know what to do. I was basically wrapping this almost like a present and Mod Podging as I went. When I got to the top of the <clears throat> package, all I did was cut down towards the corners so I could fold those pieces in nice and neatly.
I'm gonna finish this off by putting a knob on top and some really cute crocheted ribbon. I picked this up, uh, feels like a gazillion years ago and it's been sitting around in my stash and I finally found something to use it on. Now that kind of crochet ribbon is a little less my style, but it is definitely my mom's style. Then I'm gonna take this knob I had in my <clears throat> junk drawer in the studio and I'm just gonna pop that one right on top again I was watching one of Teresa's videos the other day and oh my goodness her shabby okay you guys gotta know I literally call her the queen of shabby chic I love her DIYs if you guys are still with me you are total champs for this last block DIY, we are going to be building four sections with three of the tumbling tower blocks in each. Then we're going to assemble them in what is essentially a really cute little pot for lack of a better word. And we're going to do that by alternating each corner. And because we're doing that, it's totally square and it's much stronger than if we tried to do two inside and two on the outside. I really hope that makes sense. I really hope you can see it a little better than I'm explaining it. Then we're gonna add three of the tower blocks to the bottom so it is actually a closed little, I keep saying pot, box. I'm not sure what we're gonna call it today. And then we're gonna use this on our tiered tray as something that we can use any time of the year. We can change it out. We can put a succulent in it. We can put greenery in it. We could put dried flowers in it. Today, I have a beautiful, uh, it's almost like a burnt orange. It actually looks a little bit like a peony and I'm gonna pop that in when we're done. So we're gonna give it a light coat of white paint and I'm not covering it entirely. I'm tapping off a lot of the paint before I move on and that's because I wanna see that really cute wood grain popping through. Once that is dry, I am going to take a really pretty blue paint and we're just gonna dry brush that over top. Again, we're gonna be able to see everything so it's gonna give us some great texture and dimension. So you can see the wood grain, we've added the white paint lightly and now we are adding a little bit of blue paint just to give it a little bit more color texture and dimension a little twine wrapped around and tied off for that really pretty fall farmhouse feel then I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of leftover floral foam and add that flower just like I told you guys about isn't it pretty I bought these at Dollar Tree last year and I just love them. You think it's a peony, you guys? Head down to the comments and tell me what kind of flower that is. Now let's put our tear tray together. I will say I go back and forth and back and forth. I find this takes a lot of futzing around. So first up, I'm gonna add a bandana and then my two big pumpkins that I picked up at Dollar Tree. That is a little riser I made in my last Jenga block video. So like I said, I hope you guys will go and check that out and see all the fun DIYs I made last time. We're gonna keep moving around and adding all the little DIYs we make until we find just the right level and scale and we get everything where we want it to go. I love adding a whole bunch of greenery and I love these little ones that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I've got about four or five of them now, but they are scattered all over the house on tiered trays and tucked into things. I also added a string of the Dollar Tree wood beads and some of my tiny orange pumpkins that, I'm not going to lie, they've been in my collection forever. And you guys, I love this, and I know you hear me say that lots, but this is probably my favorite tiered tray. 
Okay, you guys, that is a wrap for me. Make sure you head down to that playlist and watch all the videos and remember to comment on them. Now, I promised you info on another giveaway. Well, that's because, like I've been telling you guys, I am this close to hitting my next YouTube milestone of 25,000 subscribers. I, I can't even, like I literally can't even. Anyway, August 25th, is my two year anniversary on YouTube. And I really wanna to get to that next milestone of 25,000 subscribers. So here's the deal. Once we get there, the day we get to 25,000 subscribers, we are gonna pull somebody who's commented on the videos ever since I started talking about this. And we're gonna pull one random winner for a giveaway. Now, here's the deal. You want more chances to win? Make sure you have watched all of the videos since I started talking about this massive milestone and make sure you've commented because those are the videos that we are gonna pull one of our winners from. You guys, I always tell you I appreciate your support so, so, so much. We really, really do. We appreciate every single one of you who stops by and watches our videos right here on Lisa and Company. So thank you again from the very, bottom of my heart. Now, like I said, that's a wrap for me today. Make sure you go watch all those videos down in the playlist. I hope you enjoy every single one of them and we'll see you in the next video. Here's a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy and don't forget to stop by and visit us at Lisa and Company DIY on Instagram and Lisa and Company on Facebook. You never know what you'll see there. I love to share my hauls and little bits and pieces of my life so I hope you'll come over and join me. Until then you guys, we'll see you in the next video.